Okay. Hello everyone. Um, my name is Paul. I uh, am a front-end developer, so I um, usually write JavaScript. But I used to work for a gaming company, and they use Lua a lot. So um, I, I picked it up there, and absolutely loved it. And I wanted to use it every day. So, um, so the more ways that um, they can run Lua in the, the browser, the better. Um, That's just for that. So I'll try and speak up. Okay, so um, you may know me also from um, another project, which is Moonshine. I'm not going to talk about it today, but it's a VM that runs Lua bytecode in the browser. Um, so you have to take your, your Lua code, compile it, process that compiled bytecode um, to JSON, and then run it in the browser. And that has limitations. You can't run arbitrary um, like Lua code in the browser. And uh, because it interprets the, the bytecode at runtime, it's not benefiting from the, uh, from the, the JIT of the browser. Um, so I'm today going to talk about my new project, which is Starlight, um, which is a, um, a, a translator from, from Lua to Lua code to Lua to, to JavaScript, or more specifically, um, ES6, um, or ES2015, as it's called now. So, um, so first of all, gonna, the, the story of Starlight started, well, it started six months ago, but it really started like two years ago, when I came across ES6 for the first time and noticed, oh, there's some similarities here between um, what I use every day and what I would want to be using every day. Um, and first of all, generators, obviously, it's cooperative multitasking. It's, it's very similar to something we know already, which is coroutines. Um, the syntax is very similar. Um, there's, other, there's, there's the spread operator that uh, takes an array and unpacks it into its individual parts, um, very much like table.unpack. Um, but yeah, the difference, oh yeah, Table to Unpack was uh, released um, with Lua 5.0 in 2003. Um, so that's 13 years it's been in Lua and it's only just got to the browser, which, uh, but it's great. So, but to put that into context, um, in 2003, I, uh, I had a state-of-the-art mobile phone that I loved for the time. Um, it was an orange SPV, it ran Windows. There was no such thing as iPhones back then, but it had a camera which was extremely advanced, but you had to carry it around with you and plug it into the bottom. So that, that's 2003. Um, so other features, there's the REST operator in ES6, um, which obviously is Varags. Um, that was released with 2.5 in 1996 when we were all playing Mario 64. Um, other features are proxies, where you can define an object with certain properties um, and handle the functions. Um, then apply that object to another and hook into the events on that object, very much like uh, meta tables. Or fullbacks, as they were called when they were first introduced in 2.1. And that was back in 1995 when we had usual suspects on the screens, Toy Story, and of course, Sailor Moon Super S, <laughs> the movie. Um, so yeah, lastly, destructuring assignments, obviously familiar with these, uh, multiple return values, and block scoping via the let keyword. Um, so yeah, they all came out with the initial version of, uh, of Lua. There's a new version number on there, but it's 1994, the year that England didn't qualify for the World Cup, unfortunately. But uh, yes, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, good year for, for Brazil in 1994, Lua and the World Cup. Um, so yeah, la let's fast forward 21 years, 21 years now. Um, so that's a whole Justin Bieber. Um, <laughs> and we have um, we have the ability to do these things in the browser. Um, 
Yeah, it took, it's taken a while though because like, it, I was busy when ESX first came out. Um, so I didn't, I, I saw these things and I thought, someone else is going to see this, these, these similarities. There'll be a translator, someone will write one. It's going to be great. And I waited a year and a half and no one, no one made one. And so I was like, oh, okay, go on then. Um, but yeah, I had the free time and so I created Starlight. Um, obviously the name comes from Moonshine to Starlight. Um, what does it look like? Well, uh, uh, this is going to be a problem. Can everyone see that? Okay. Um, uh, Zoom doesn't work. Um, okay, well, you've got your Lua code here in a script tag with, uh, with a Lua type. Um, you, include, you include the Starlight library, um, which will take the, the tags with the mark Lua and execute them on page load if you've got, if you've got the, uh, the, the switch. Um, it does translate it to ES6, which some browsers don't, well, a lot of browsers don't handle all of ES6 just yet. So you need to, for now, include Babel Core or Babel Browser plugin library. Um, and that's pretty weighty. That's, that's over 800K and it's a little bit slow. So, but fortunately, it's not going to be around forever. Browsers will take on the, uh, the support natively, and we can get rid of that. Um, so how do, you, how do you use, or how to configure it? Um, you can configure how the, uh, the, the standard out um, is directed. Um, but also, this is probably more important, you can um, import your JavaScript code or your JavaScript functions into the Lua environment and then just run um, run them in the Lua. In Sailor, um, they've benefited from having modules. Um, so we've got this, this code, top code block has got the module mod name greeting so it's, it's preloaded, it's not run straight away and then it can be referenced using require from for other script tags. It also has a DOM API. Obviously, you can get away from JavaScript, but you can't get away from the DOM in the browser. Um, so, this uses the same API as Moonshine. It's, uh, everything's packaged into the, the window um, namespace. So, you prefix everything with window, um, but there's also a window.extract, which will um, extract all of those functions out into the global namespace if that's what you want to do. Um, and then it looks a bit more normal, like set timeout. And, um, although you would, will have to use the colon syntax to keep the context for each function call. Um, obviously, that's great, but that's, I don't code front end, um, I, I don't script my uh, applications in script tags in the, in the page. I, uh, I, I use Grunt or Gulp or Webpack. Um, so you can do the same with, uh, with this and have all your Lua scripts um, in, in directory structure, then, then at build time just package them all together. And um, it's pretty simple. It's got a source, a destination. Um, again, we need, to, we need to use Babel to, to translate that ES6 to something we can use today, but eventually get rid of that. And uh, and yeah, it's still it's only six months old. Um, it's uh, it's still in development, um, so we've got a bit of a roadmap. Uh, like, um, source mapping would be good. At the moment, you get error messages, but you don't get line numbers or any context, which is a bit hard going. Um, yeah, gulp task. Um, use the source attribute on script tags. It doesn't support that at the moment, so that'll be a biggie. And, uh, and a plugin system is, is, is desirable because uh, things like coroutines and generators, they aren't a one-to-one -one match and there are some issues and you'd, you'd need to um, restrict how you use coroutines in order to get it to translate. So I'd rather not support that natively and have it in a plugin where you sign up to, it, to, these, to this uh, knowledge. So, that's kind of it, really. Um, what I'd love 
you to do is to use it and report any uh, any issues you find um, with Moonshine. I had a, whole, a team of Lua developers available that would tell me where I was going wrong all the time. Um, I don't have that anymore, so um, I need I need feedback and, uh, and and tell me where my documentation is is lacking because I know it is. Um, and that's it, really. It was just an introduction. than JavaScript because uh, it seems that at the beginning uh, the type property is for handling several kind of uh, scripts but at the end there is only JavaScript. Yes. Um, yeah, could we so yeah, I should have been a bit... I should have been more clear of that. Um, yeah, it, the Starlight takes the, uh, the script tags with, uh, with, with Lua in them and, uh, and then just translates that. Like it, it's got a, a, a part, well, part, use Lua parse um, and it has a like code generator to, to, to take the, the AST tree, the AST, um, and and just create some JavaScript, some ES6 code that, uh, that 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 runs. So it is running JavaScript. So it's actually translating the word JavaScript. Yes, yes. Do the functions defined in Lua are they? JavaScript functions as well, and could you put them in the on-click events? In yes. And so on? Yeah. yeah. Uh, could you explain uh, how do you want to benefit from using coroutines for plugins, and why not to use simple functions? Um, well, coroutines, I mean, they, they have a lot of benefit, especially in, um, in back in gaming and animation. You can kind of time slice things. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of benefits to using coroutines there. Um, unfortunately, yeah, the, it doesn't map to to generators. But uh, so I forgot what the other part of your question was. Is that is that answer? Uh, so why, how, why do you think coroutines are useful uh, for plugins? Um, oh, sorry, um, I probably didn't make that clear. The, um, the coroutines weren't for for the plugins. Uh, I want to put the coroutines namespace in a plugin. So I need to create a plugin system for that. So is there anything else apart from coroutines that you can't implement in ES6? Um, is that the only possibility left? Uh, possibly. I mean, there's, obviously, there's uh, the debug library that is very implementation specific. So that's not going to translate. And, and things like OS and, yeah, and, and the file system. Yeah. But you can, you can mock the files. Sorry? No other language features you have issues. Not that I know of, no. Right. Also, is, is Sailor using Starlight? Yes, yeah. Sailor is using Starlight and other uh, virtual machines. I, I initially, Starlight didn't exist. So we started off with Lua 5.1 GS. And then as I started searching around, I found Moonshine. And then I integrated it with Moonshine, and then I ran into a problem because Moonshine they, uh, takes bytecode and then runs it on the virtual machine. And there was a problem with um, when we were running Sailor over Logit because the bytecode generated is completely different. So we, we would have, you know, we weren't able to do that. And, and so I contacted Paul because he was working on, on Moonshine, and then he told me, oh, I actually have this <laughs> other thing, which is called Starlight, and, and yeah. <coughs> Any other questions? Um, does Starlight generate source maps? No, no, that's on the uh, to-do list. On the roadmap. Yeah, it's yeah, desperately needed. Yeah. Any other questions? Apparently everyone's convinced that Lua is a great language for web development. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'd like to thank both speakers.